hello what's up ali here for our ps4 and the ps5 jailbreak update well a few days ago the six new bounties awarded by sony was shared on the hacker ones page showing the latest bounties regarding some new discoveries and most of them are for c which may even contains the long-awaited kernel exploit and just before that was shared, c has announced his retirement from the jailbreak scene. But now, he just released the long-awaited second part of his write-up of his Mastercore exploit. So for those who are not yet aware, Mastercore hack is an exploit that takes advantage of a vulnerability from a PS2 game classic that is available on the PSN. With this vulnerability, it may be possible to load some homebrews or maybe some games, but as of now, it is only used to load some PS2 ISO and some emulators. So uh, is this pointing us to a very enticing progress on our next jailbreak? Are we really getting near that, that next jailbreak? Or is it just another update from a close to a dead end work? First, let us read through this article and as always, We'll leave a link on our description for you to check them personally. And later, we will provide our thoughts and insights regarding this topic. So a PS4 and PS5 Master Core Hack. c -Turk publishes part 2 of his write-up, Native Code Execution on PS5 Likely. The long-awaited part 2 of a C-Turd's write-up for the Mastercore exploit has finally been published by the hacker. Although the hacker never got to finish the implementation, the write-up lays the foundation of potential native code execution on PS5 and PS4. c -Turt announced that he will be leaving the PlayStation hacking scene. But between five recent reports to HackerOne and today's write-up, it seems he doesn't intend to leave without wrapping things up nicely. So what is the Mastercore exploit for the PS4 and PS5? Mastercore is an unpatched vulnerability on the PS4 and PS5 running through their PS2 emulation layer. The vulnerability was disclosed and described with great detail by PlayStation hacker c in September last year, and a public re-implementation was released by Macaulay Hudson early 2023. So if you want to know more about this update, you may check our library for our past videos regarding this update, or you may visit wololo.net and you may browse through some of the article here to know more about the updates on this whole Mastercore exploit. Some specific PS2 games for the PS4 and PS5 are vulnerable to buffer overflows, which allows us to run unsigned code on the PS4 and PS5. The currently only known exploitable game through this vulnerability is Okage, Shadow King, a PS2 game available for PS4 and PS5 on Sony's PSN. By loading specifically crafted save files into this game, it is possible to trigger an exploit chain on the PS4 and PS5 running the most recent firmwares to then enable some limited homebrew capability. So far, the most user-friendly use cases for this vulnerability have been emulators and the PS2 game ISO. So basically, Mastercore Exploit is already working now, but it's only being used to load some emulators and PS2 game ISO. So Mastercore Write-Up Part 2, PS5 Native Execution. So far, Mastercore has given us a PS2 native execution and native code through ROP toolchain on PS4 and PS5. What to this write-up is demonstrating is that exploits in the JIT compilation process of the PS2 emulator can lead to native code execution on the PS4 and PS5. To achieve this, c showcases three exploits in the PS2 compiler code. There might be more that allow him to get native code execution as well as techniques to defeat ASLR. 
Seatert unfortunately never fully weaponized this exploit and has made the decision to leave the scene before fully completing that. He's however leaving a lot of details ready for anyone who would be willing to push this exploit further. Seatert believes that with the tools he's leaving behind, there is enough to achieve native code execution on the PS4 and PS5. This would remain a user mode exploit but could allow for a decent homebrew environment on these consoles. However, the hacker emphasizes that although Sony has chosen to not patch these vulnerabilities, they have put a limitation in how the code can be exploited. In particular, loading PS4 pirate games through this mechanism would be tough, albeit not impossible, in its current state. Considering that only up to 65 MB can be loaded, a limitation introduced in the PS5 firmware 6.0 and we believe PS4 10.0. I'll leave you with the Citrus conclusion which summarizes the status of this write-up pretty nicely. For more, read his full write-up here. So he left a link here to check the actual write-up. So if there's anyone who is actually knowledgeable enough with the right tools and knowledge, may be able uh, to get something through his work and be able uh, to continue where he left off. Unfortunately, these are all jargons on my end. Anyway, uh, there's a reasonably good chance that with enough motivation and vulnerabilities described in this post could be exploited to take over the compiler process. The exploit would allow arbitrary code execution on the latest firmwares of the PS4 and PS5, allowing native homebrew applications to be run off USB storage, for example. Even with the mitigation, Sony shipped in response to this research to limit the size of applications that could be run. I still believe it would be possible to run larger applications, albeit with the performance overhead of them being partially emulated or dynamically paged in and out. With the amount of work required, I don't realistically think we'll see polished demos of Linux and retail PS4 games running, but it's fun to think that there's a good chance that theoretically, those things might at least be technically possible. So based on this write-up, it simply shows more implementation of his exploit. Though he was still not able to get a breakthrough on this, but he mentioned that loading demos from Linux or retail PS4 games is still technically possible with enough work. And there's just one issue I'd like to raise regarding this concern, which is why Sony intentionally not patching this exploit. Is it because of the limitation of this exploit will not make it possible to load some homebrews? Or there's something more within this bounty system that is not yet being shared? So uh, unfortunately, he has already announced his retirement, uh, but is he leaving because everything has been wrapped up already and he is uh, waiting for the time to be released? Or he is uh, leaving because he encountered a dead end of his work and just waiting for someone able with the right skill and knowledge to continue his work? Uh, guess I uh, will know that in the next few weeks or months maybe. For now, uh, we'll just have to wait for more releases regarding this exploit. This will be it for now. If there's anything you would like to share or add regarding this topic or concern, you may go ahead and share them in our comment section. And again, this is Ali. If you found this video helpful, please go ahead and like and subscribe. And I will definitely see you on our next video. Bye-bye.